So why can't a brother and a sister double team a chick? You know, it's not gay if two guys are fucking a chick. They're not fucking each other, you know? So who cares? Why not do your own thing and let them say what they want? What's up guys and welcome to a new episode of My Fucking Favorites, which is not monthly, but it's close to every other month. But instead of trying to cryptically figure out which month this is supposed to be for, other than the month that we're in right now, I guess, let's just go ahead and jump into it. So the first category, as always, is sex position. And this month's sex position is gonna be doggy style on the couch or couch doggy style. So couch doggy style is basically where, let's say you have a couch like this that has a back. So you get on the part of the couch where you're supposed to sit on your knees, you face the back of the couch, you put your hands and probably your face because you're gonna be screaming loud because he's gonna be hitting you deep as deep as however the size of his dick can. And he's gonna be pounding you from behind, either putting his hands on the couch, on your shoulders, or on your hips. I like this one a lot because it gets in really deep, like normal doggy style, but I'm able to have some cushioning to brace myself on my knees, as well as a place to put my face where I can just moan or scream very loudly because as I stated earlier, he's getting in deep. I think this one's pretty simple, but I've done a lot of sex positions in this series. And this one's probably one of my favorites aside from like reverse cowgirl or regular doggy style. Moving on for porn star of the month or months, we've got a platinum blonde for you. I don't love her face because she reminds me of Casey Tron, kind of. If you're into Twitch subculture, you probably know who I'm talking about. But on good days, she looks like Trisha Paytas in the face. And on bad days, she looks like Casey Tron in the face. Anyway, this month's porn star is... Alexis Ford. She's got a reasonably nice body, nice tits, her porn scenes don't suck, and the only thing I don't like about her at all is the fake ass. She used to not have a fake ass, and it was like a nice little perky butt, like a white girl perky butt, not like a white girl flat fuck butt. But I think the worst people to get butt implants, honestly, and it doesn't look like a Brazilian butt lift, it looks like legit butt implants. I feel like the worst people for it are porn stars, because when porn stars get in the doggy style position, there's this very unnatural thickness and arch you have on the top of the butt next to like the butt bone. So unless you have a lot of fat to combat the fact that you have like plastic in your ass, it looks like an anorexic butt bone next to like this weird plastic mound in a place where you're not supposed to have any fat or any roundness. I don't know if any of you guys can commiserate with me on that, but for some reason that's just so, so unattractive. Otherwise, Alexis Ford is a hot bitch. Let me know who your porn star of the month is. I feel like I'm always running out of porn stars. Not as quickly as I'm running out of good sex positions that I actually use, but pretty quickly. I do have another three or four left in my repertoire, and I did discover a new hot Asian girl, which we're gonna save for next month. Next category is, let me look it up, I forget the order. Games, my favorite category of all time, as you guys know. Okay, so the first game we're gonna talk about is Ori in the Blind Forest. It's an indie game, and I know it's been a while since the game came out, but there's gonna be an Ori in the Blind Forest 2. I forget what it's called. I had played the game when it was relatively new on my Twitch channel, but since Jay likes that kind of game, he loves Hollow Knight, and I showed him that game. I decided to show him Ori in the Blind Forest thinking he would like it a little bit, but he absolutely fell in love with it. It's one of his favorite indie games of all time now, I actually got him like this giant plushie of Ori and Naru for behind his stream. I know you guys can't really see it that much because he's kind of in the way, but it's a really cool plushie. Maybe I'll insert a picture here. And I think it's a good time to bring it up because not only did Jay and I play it this month or since I've done the last fucking favorites, you guys know what I mean by this month. But the new one's coming out this year and I want you guys to get hyped for it. One thing I want to let you guys know, play the fucking deluxe edition. Don't just play the original Ori in the Blind Forest. You get a bunch of backstory from Naru, who acts as like the surrogate mother to Ori, the one who dies in the beginning. Saddest intro to any game ever, by the way. That's not even a spoiler. It happens in the first like minute of the game. Everything about that game is beautiful. It's touching. And the developers are saying that the next game is gonna be 10 times better graphically, which I can't even imagine. But remember, play the definitive edition. Okay, move Moving on, we have the Telltale Walking Dead series. Everyone touts the Walking Dead series as the best Telltale series of all time, and I have to agree. I would say that it rivals, even though it's not Telltale, Life is Strange, which is a guilty pleasure of mine. More on that later. Anyway, the Telltale series, oh, Clementine, you just fucking fall in love with her. You love Lee right from the beginning. It's just like an amazing surrogate father-daughter experience. You grow to really love and really hate some characters. And the development of the story, I've heard it makes people cry. It doesn't make me cry, but it is very sad and very frustrating at times. And there's a lot of really cool plot twists. It's not like a regular zombie game where there's gonna be a lot of cheap jump scares. There are some jump scares, but they're not bad. And the choices you have to make are very brutal. 
brutal. It's a really fun game. If you like The Walking Dead, you're gonna like this even more because in my opinion, and I've heard from a lot of other people, the game is 10 times better than the show. Also, I played the mini series of The Walking Dead this month, which is a Michonne based series. Michonne looks a little bit more like she's supposed to in the comic books. It's a really fun little playthrough. It's not as good as the main storyline in my opinion, but more Michonne, good for me. The next game that I'm currently playing right now that I'm not finished with, but I've been farther in before, that'll make sense in a moment, is Assassin's Creed Syndicate. I know it's the second most recent Assassin's Creed game or major Assassin's Creed game, but I am one who has to go at it in order, even if they're not super tightly connected, especially if it's one of my favorite franchises, which Assassin's Creed is. Despite it having been released every single year up until the last two years, Syndicate is one of my favorite installments by far. I think Brotherhood is still my favorite because it's so nostalgic for me and it was like, I played it at the perfect time for me to have the best emotional reaction to it. And I think it was the most innovative incrementally, like the last one was a lot worse than that one. And then they introduced a bunch of really cool mechanics in that game. I just really love that game and I love Ezio, so obviously. But but Syndicate's really amazing. Love Evie, love Jacob, love the whole like British vibe. Murder mysteries like in Unity, but better by like a lot. The murder mysteries, I, I cannot fucking just the best. I cannot overstate how much I love Assassin's Creed murder mystery little missions. Oh my God. They at first didn't have them in Syndicate, I remember, because I started playing it right when it came out. But I was playing it on my PS4, not my PS4 Pro. So since it had been so long since I abandoned my playthrough, through of Syndicate, Jay and I decided that we were gonna start over, why not? Instead of trying to find the save from my PS4, then putting it on the Pro, then playing and being like, what the hell happened in this story? We decided to start over. It just made the most sense. Also, it's a really fun game to play, so why not? We get to hang out with Dickens and Marks, and it's just a lot of fun. I'm really excited to play Assassin's Creed Origins, I really am, but I'm having a lot of fun with Syndicate right now, so I'm not gonna rush it. If you decided that the previous Assassin's Creed's like Unity, Black Flag, that they sucked and you skipped Syndicate, go back and play it, it's one of the best ones. And the last little tidbit of gaming I wanna talk about in this video is the farewell DLC for Life is Strange Before the Storm. It's a prequel in a prequel. Honestly, I feel like Nine Deck or Deck Nine or whatever the name of the development company that handled Before the Storm did a really good job, but what they did is they make you hate Max even more for never talking to Chloe after she moved. They show how little she talked to her and how much she blew her off with no explanation. And then in Farewell, which is them being kids before Max left for the first time to Seattle, you can see how fucked, like absolutely fucked fucked it is that she didn't talk to Chloe. And for those of you who are out of the United States who don't really understand how far Arcadia Bay or Oregon would be from Seattle, it's a two hour fucking drive, four at maximum. So I heard a lot of people say that they moved cross country or they moved out of the country and they just couldn't keep in touch with their friends as an excuse for why Max didn't keep in touch with Chloe. Spoilers, like mild spoilers. If you played Life is Strange, you know this. It's not like a big twist or anything. But again, spoiler alert, skip a minute ahead head if you don't want to hear this. Chloe's fucking dad dies. Max promises to talk to her every day to make it better. She leaves like three days after her dad dies and she never even fucking talks to her. She blows her off in texts and it's just like, I really feel like the original Life is Strange developers did not want to make it that harsh. I think they wanted it to be like Chloe and Max kind of drifted apart and Max just stopped talking to her because she got new friends and got busy or something. Not that she literally never talked to her and was never there for her. It was like a mind blowing experience, but the DLC is all right. You should play it. Teen angst, always one of my guilty pleasures. Moving on, we have movies and TV shows. Don't know what that was. Okay, so obviously new season of the Peaky Blinders, gotta watch that shit. Always wanted to fuck Cillian Murphy, even though Cillian Murphy is one of the shorter guys, blue eyes, not dark eyes, and I've seen his penis. It's not great. I think it was in uh, the day after tomorrow, 14 days later, I forget which fucking zombie movie. But yeah, I'd fuck Cillian Murphy, even though he's got a below average looking penis. <laughs> Also, Peaky Blinders is a phenomenal fucking show. Everyone should watch it. Netflix original, go the fuck on. I'll wait. Actually, I won't. Let's move on. Sword Art Online. I think Sword Art Online, finally, now that I've finished it, I started it a while back, but I barely remembered the first two episodes, and now I've finished the first season. I 
really love Sword Art Online, dude. I love the love story because it's very rare in anime, at least like the regular standard anime. Not the like hentai ecchi manga. It's rare for love stories or sexual tension to come to fruition, but the love story in Sword Art Online is actually really sweet and I really like it. And there's a lot of things in that show that kind of caught me off guard and made me feel like, whoa, this is like not like a normal anime or manga series. That's cool. Things like, you know, borderline incest. Also, it combines two of my favorite things, online gaming and manga. I love it, it's really great. If you haven't watched it yet, I highly recommend it. I remember everyone recommending it to me when it first came out in the United States, and then I waited a really long time and I shouldn't have to watch it. And lastly, we have another Netflix original. This one is entitled The Frankenstein Chronicles. I think this is a pretty slow show to start out. But the protagonist is Sean Bean, so you're gonna wanna watch it. It's a pretty good show. It's very inter- It gets very interesting to the point where you don't really care that much that it moves a little bit slowly. If you're caught up on all your shows and you're looking for a new Netflix original to watch, I recommend it. And lastly, did I say that Frankenstein Chronicles was last? I don't remember. On Netflix, you can also watch the Ricky Gervais special entitled Humanity. It's pretty good. I think I've heard him reuse maybe like one joke or something, but the specials, it's good. I love Ricky Gervais and a lot of his like life ideologies are in line with mine and he's also a really cool dude. I've watched a lot of his British shows like The British Office. There's also that one where he's in like that old folks nursing home and he's pretending to be like a retard. That one's good too. Music. Wait, I can do that better. <laughs> music. Okay, so we have a lot of new music this month and it all started with a viewer in my Twitch chat recommending Silosis, the band. Jay is usually someone who likes to experiment with different music and different bands and try new things and I'm the kind of person that has to listen to something three or four times to even like it, so I usually use Jay as my scout for good music and sometimes he'll send me black and death metal, frog rock, or something a little bit lighter that I would really like and I'm like, oh yes, and then it becomes like my favorite shit for like a whole month. Well, Jay has hasn't been doing it that often for me and it's been pissing me off that he's been sticking to only like one or two bands. I'm like, Jay, I need new music, come on. Aside from this series and the things that you guys recommend, I don't know any new music or old music that I just haven't heard of that's good. So the viewer recommends Silosis and here's my song from Silosis. I, I wrote it down, I don't remember which one is my favorite, but I have a lot of bands here, so we're only gonna do one per. So for Silosis, I recommend Pillars of Road. There's a bunch of really good songs by Silosis. They're fucking amazing. Anyway, so I show Silosis to Jay. Jay falls in love with it and it completely reinvigorates Jay's drive to look for new metal. For me. He acts like it's for him, but it's totally to my benefit. So here's a list of bands and songs I didn't know about until this month that Jay showed me. We have Withering Strands by Bellacore. <laughs> Bellacore is really fucking good. You guys should check them out. And Wretched Blues by Ghost Brigade. <laughs> Silosis, Bellacore, and Ghost Brigade are three bands I didn't know of until this month. Also, I have two guilty pleasure songs today for you guys, things that I don't usually listen to. The first of which, and the worst of which, is I Did Something Bad by Taylor Swift. I sometimes occasionally like pop music. It's like, a, I understand it's bad, but it's like a guilty pleasure of mine. Not it's bad as in like, oh, it's immoral, but like the music's bad. But I Did Something Bad by Taylor Swift does remind me of all of the times that I've fallen in love with some kind of Christina Aguilera or Taylor Swift. And then another guilty pleasure song that I learned about because I started, you know, playing bass was 16 Saltines by Jack White. For some reason, I just love that song. It's not usually my style of music, but it's really stuck in my head. And now that I'm learning to play it on bass, now that I can play it on bass, it's fun. I like it. Guy or girl, I wanna fuck this month or last few months. Okay, so I wanna go with something completely non-controversial like Cillian Murphy, something that you guys have known about me for a while, something that's relatively topical because, you know, I talked about fucking Peaky Blinders. But no, I think Jacob and Evie Fry are both pretty hot. Jacob looks a little bit weird when he takes off his shirt, but I think they're trying to be period accurate in that men used to have like really wide waists and wear their pants like up to here like some girl with high-waisted leggings. Other than that, they're both pretty hot and I do a little bit, just a little bit. Not lucidly, not strongly fantasize about having a threesome with them, but then, you know, they're siblings. I think my body even allows me to have these kinds of fantasies. Very, very rarely. 
I might add, because I have no siblings of my own, so I don't truly know what it's like to be completely disgusted by sibling incest. I mean, two sisters can go fuck a guy together, or even be kind of lesbian with each other and like, that's hot. And like, two brothers can totally double team a chick. So why can't a brother and a sister double team a chick? You know, it's not gay. If two guys are fucking a chick, they're not fucking each other, you know? Halfway joking, halfway not, and we're gonna stop fucking trying to justify this right now. Okay, favorite girly thing. This isn't like too much of a girly thing, but it's pink, so it'll do. I also really love, by the way, thank you Zoe and Melanie, the two Zoe and Melanie fucking lip glosses that I got from you guys this month. So fucking good. Okay, so this is a gallon bottle, a pink gallon bottle with this gallon gear over cover thing that I got from Gallon Gear. I saw Gallon Gear on Instagram because this girl, Kristalina, she has the perfect body, but a little bit of a nerdy face, which kind of works for her. I saw her promoting it and I was like, this is really fucking cool and I need to drink more water, otherwise all my hair's gonna fall out because I live in Vegas and there's no humidity and I'm always dehydrated. So I decided to get this to hold myself to the standard of drinking at least one gallon a day, slowly through sipping, and I can take this to the gym. I can hook on my keys, I can uh, put in my phone, like here, we just put in my phone. Phone. There you go. There's there's my phone. I'll put my phone in there. That's cool. All this shit's fucking cool. It's um, in pink camo so no Barbies will come up and steal my water bottle because they won't be able to see it. I love camo jokes by the way you guys. If there was a like best jokes of the month, camo jokes would be in there every time. Every time I see a dude wearing camo, let's say he's wearing camo pants or something, I'm like, Jay. That guy has no legs. Why can't I see his legs? And Jay fucking hates me for it. But I fucking love it, okay? Camo jokes are where it's fucking at. But my favorite thing of the month is, drum roll please, my mini Black Star Fly 3 bass amp. It's so fucking cute and it's bass specific. So it has like all the fucking EQ and the gain and the overdrive button that makes it sound like even sexier, like metal songs and stuff. I haven't played with it enough yet. And I don't know enough about amps and things like that yet to get like the perfect sound, but it is so cute. It can be battery operated or AC adapter operated and you can plug in your headphones so you can play without like disturbing the neighbors and you can plug in like your laptop or your phone so you can play music through it so you can jam along with music. I like ran out of voice there. Did you guys hear that? But anyway, this thing is actually really good for such a small fucking amp. I love it. And I'm excited to play more away from the computer off of Rocksmith with it. It's gonna be a great little practice tool. It was only 60 bucks on Amazon and it's much better than I thought it would be. I can literally like put this in my butt and walk around and play my bass. It's amazing. Let me show you. Or I could like strap it to my shoulder or something. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like the video and subscribe if you did. This video, I forgot to say, is also brought to you by my merch, which guess what guys? I have leggings now. If I've finished making the leggings, they will be used as the 10% off link, but you can get 10% off anything in the store if you click the link in the description. You can also support on Patreon if you wanna support me, but whatever, I just appreciate you guys watching the video. So I hope you guys have a wonderful fucking week. I hope I turned you guys on to something new. And if you have anything that you like in the last couple months, please let me know so I can check it out as well. I give you information, you give me information. We learn new things and we share things that we like. We have more in common than we think. You're fucking amazing, the light of my life, my YouTube viewers, thank you. See you in the next video.